Hello everyone, I'm Tech Bob, and welcome to eTech Facebook Live Fridays. And today we're going to be reviewing two soldering tools, the Mijing MS1 desoldering platform and the Sugon 26D soldering station. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but they are brands that come from China. Um, we're going to do first is start with a desoldering platform. Uh, Hector's uh, the one actually hands on today, so he's going to be opening the box. So Hector, go ahead and open it up. Um, this is the platform itself of the power cable the platform and then it comes with five different we want to call them like bases or, or plates um, the one we have on there right now is the universal desoldering platform so this will work for the iPhone 10 series 11 series 12 series even 13 series and then all the little uh, packages you see below that are different plates that do come with the version we sell um, so it has everything from the plates to reball ICs to uh, do stuff on face ID, uh, the home button cable, different things like that. So um, definitely a good bundle set. Uh, if you're needing something to work on face ID or touch ID or separate boards, this is a good tool to start with. So Hector, go ahead and plug the power cable in. Um, what he has right now is an iPhone 10 board. That's what we're gonna be demonstrating with today. Uh, the way it works is you put the board on the platform and you have those four little blue arms what you do is put those on the bottom layer of the board kind of to hold it down. Uh, you notice Hector flipped that power switch on the uh, power cable right there. That provides power to the device. And this thing is super simple. It has three buttons. Um, once, is Hector, Hector is the, are the blue things in place? The clamps, I guess, the little arms. Get those in place first. Okay, so I think we have almost all of them. We have that last one maybe. I think we only need three on this one, right Hector? Yeah. Okay, we're only going to use three. The reason there's four is depending on the board you're doing, you may need either all four of them or from different angles where the, the parts are that you can hold the bottom part of the board. So we're going to use those three. Um, now the way this is going to work is you turn it on. By default, it's set to 200 degrees Celsius and 300 seconds. Uh, all you need to do is hit that white button that says confirm OK. So Hector, go ahead and hit that. Oh, sorry, one more thing Hector just reminded me of. So if you do have EMI stickers like this, you do have to cut that little sticker or you can peel it off because what's going to happen if you don't cut it right now, when you go and try to separate later, that sticker will actually hold the board down. Um, also, another thing that Hector's pointing out, this is a preferred method for separating the board. What he did is he put in a screw into that screw post right there. So that's actually going to be the point where we grab and lift the top layer of the board off from. So um, now that the sticker is cut and then we point out the screws there, we're good to hit the confirm slash OK button. So Hector, go ahead and hit, hit that button. All right, so you notice now it's one, the temperature is going to be, it's preheating basically, and then the temperature, the timer is counting down. 300 seconds approximately equates to five minutes. So what we're going to do is shift this over to the left a little bit, or it's like four-ish minutes. So we're gonna, sh three minutes is the time that we're gonna wait. Sorry, just give me some code. Uh, he's gonna shift the uh, the platform over to the left. Um, so Hector, move that over, the whole thing over while we look at the Sugon thing, the Sugon soldering station. Yeah, move that over to the side and then we'll look at the Sugon. So while this thing is counting down and preheating, we're gonna look at the soldering station to the right. So the soldering station that we have is called the Sugon 26D. The cool thing about this soldering station is it is a very budget-friendly soldering station. Um, this one does everything that you would get out of the 500 plus soldering stations, but it's $199. So a couple quick bonuses that come with this station. It comes with one soldering tip, which Hector, if you want to pull that out and show it, go, there we go. It's, a, it's just a pointed conical one, which is great for the majority of your soldering uses. Um, some other things, so it has a quick tip change function. So Hector's showing on the left side, what you do is you put the tip in there. It'll actually grab the tip when you pull up on the iron. So it disconnected and then you can plug the other tip in without ever turning off the machine, which is pretty cool. So uh, it saves you some time as far as the repair process goes. So we have the blade tip on there now really quick. Uh, and then on the right hand side where we put the iron in, not only do you does it come with the holder, it comes with two different cleaners. So you have the bottom part, which is more of like a brush for the tip. And then you have the part above it, which is copper little wiring. So that's the standard like where you poke the tip into. So you have two cleaning functions there. It does have the auto sensing function. So I don't know if you hear that beeping, but when Hector takes out the iron, it actually heats up. 
and then when he puts it back in it'll cool down that way it doesn't stay hot the whole time so it'll help extend the life of your uh your station hector can you angle up that station a little bit just so they can kind of see the screen there we go so this looks very similar to the quick uh, soldering, or sorry, hotter rework station, if you've seen that. It has three different channels, so if you hit that button, you can pre-program different temperatures. So Hector, hit like channel one. So that's at 300, hit channel two. We have that at 350, and then channel three, I think, is at 380. 380. So if you have certain temperatures you like to use for a certain type of soldering job, it's great to do that. And then those two buttons below those is just to adjust it. We recommend 380 for most things. It's a good temperature to melt solder out without being too hot to damage other things. Um, but again, this station is pretty solid. We'll give the the uh, preheater, don't separate it just yet, Hector. We'll give that a couple more seconds. I'm actually gonna switch to another screen. So we're gonna go off camera. This is just a couple overview things for our micro soldering tools. So this micro soldering section is actually under tools and then it's micro soldering right here. Anything we bring on to our website that has to do with micro soldering, we're dropping into here. So anything from the small hand tools to the machines, it's all going to be here in one spot. I've actually pulled up the product pages for the other two. So here is the Mijing uh, preheater. It says preheater, but it's also a desoldering station as you saw in the package. So this is the, uh, the one that's preheating the board right now. And then this is the Sugon 2060. As I mentioned, Pretty good price there, it's $199, and if you're looking for a good starter soldering station to get into soldering, this is probably going to be your best bet, because for the price, it's unmatched what you're getting versus other stations out there. And then, as far as tips go, I did have this pulled up, oh, I actually just updated that image, so give it a second, it's loading, there we go, so... They all have images now. Um, these are the different tips we offer for the Sugon machine. You see it says JBC C210. Um, so the Sugon actually uses some of the same JBC soldering tips. So that goes to show you it's pretty great quality that you're getting. Now the tips do come with that price, but they last for a good while and you're really getting that quality. And as far as soldering station goes, I have, I have people ask me, what do you recommend for a soldering station? I always recommend where the tip and the heating element are in the same piece because that just has better heat transfer. So you don't end up with cold solder joints or not being able to heat up something enough. But that was it for it. I just want to show a quick thing on the website side. We'll switch back over to Hector and he's about at the point where he's going to separate the board. So he's going to grab that screw that we have in there and he's going to gently lift up on the board and as you see there it came off pretty much without any resistance and while this is kind of just sitting there kind of a couple closing statements i'd like to go over sandwich boards are things that we see as repair technicians and soldering te technicians more and more now mainly because there's all these little pads around the uh the two boards that hold them together if you drop your phone hard enough or uh, something happens to where it gets hit pretty hard. If any of those pads get damaged, it's very likely that you're going to have either a power issue or a service issue. So it's important to be able to work on these. And this is the first step in the process. So what Hector did right there, just to kind of recap it, he put some flux on the sides of the or the edges of the board. Those are where all the pads are. Um, what we're going to do in the next couple streams where we go over sandwich board issues, we'll have the microscope so you can see this in more detail. But what he's doing now is kind of cleaning up those pads along the board because a lot of the times what causes the issue isn't so much something gets ripped, it's that the solder just cracks. So sometimes all you have to do is do this, separate the board, clean the old solder off, put some new solder on, reball the board and put it back together and that fixes the majority of issues. And as I mentioned, this is the start of the series. So this is showing basically step one of the sandwich board repair process, which is separating the board. Step two would be to reball the entire perimeter and also repair damaged pads. That's a little bit more high level, but we'll show a board that has that here in the, in the future streams. And then the final step is actually re-soldering re the two boards together. As I mentioned, this is only a preheater mainly to separate it. We have other machines that deal with the rejoining of the board so we'll show those on future streams but this was just an intro to the sandwich board sort of repair process as well as going over these two tools so um, as I mentioned Hector's just kind of cleaning that and what he's he used flux which is always a start for soldering I'm sure you've seen us use that in other streams 
Um, he's using the desoldering braid, which if you're not familiar with that, uh, copper is extremely absorbent of solder once it's heated up. So you touch the iron to the braid and you kind of just follow along anywhere that you want to remove uh, solder. And now one more tip while he's kind of going through that. A big hesitation to many people for doing this process is you get the board hot enough to separate from the other board. It's also hot enough to potentially knock components loose or damage other things. So if you're doing it carefully and following something similar to this process right here, you shouldn't ever cause additional damage when working on a sandwich board, but it is important to be careful. So that's all we had for today's stream. Again, thanks everyone for joining. For next week's stream, we're actually going to do a stream on laser engraving. So last week during our iPhone 12 Pro back glass demonstration, someone asked to show how to do laser engraving things like keychains and custom logos and stuff like that. We're actually going to do the stream next week on that since it was requested. So stay tuned for that same time. And uh, if there's any other streams you guys would like to see, let us know. I don't think we have the third one launched or in the queue just yet. But as soon as we have that, we'll post that on our Facebook. So hope everyone has a great weekend and we'll see everyone next Friday.